Hi, I'm Daniel, and once again, OK Cool yet to be here with our anniversary. Well, it's cool to enough. It's six years, so it's not as grand as my video last year, which is one of my best videos ever made. Anyway, I decided it's time to finally discuss the show's greatest character, who appears in less than 10 episodes. Wait. Normally, I'm not the type of person of psych how to be my favourite character from a show. I'm normally the main or relatively main character. But there's something about Eddie that makes her higher to every episode she speaks in. Despite little screen time, she is complex in many ways and it has a full character arc. While I could have been up for more episodes with her, I don't think she is under UTIs. She is given enough time and doesn't have any care areas ignored. If season 3 was extended, she probably would have had an extra episode, but that wasn't needed. Even in this time, Eddie still managed to have more to her than most main characters in weaker shows. Her role serves to build up Ina while not hindering Eddie in the process. So basically like red action done well. Anyway, I don't know what else to say. Ok Go Yet To Be Heroes is underrated and a show I love, so here's another video about it. AD's character only appears one or two times in season one. I say all because she gets a brief cameo in a flashback later in season one, but it's not an episode about her. It was good they remembered her and it's clearly how plans for AD in the future, even if the first episode is quite stand alone. You have to curse one of season one's and the show's the whole best episode. And it's a good contender for episode or sell OK Kill as a show. Even if the first episode as it is are still great in my opinion. Also, if you haven't watched the show yet, this video will have some spoilers in it. You have to care is quite a vital episode for Enid's character. I have said before that the main feel the least interesting characters, which is something to debate. They are good characters with more depth than that statement main PI, especially Enid as shown in this episode. Because she's given back to her in reason how she seems, however, it still seems that many other characters have more personality and parts to find out more as the show goes on. They are more Yen's characters to experience the show through. This episode shows that more by introducing AOD, who has a dominating screen presence. She shows what the Piazza and his fan third are someone at point prep who's above them. She loves the attention and seems to be a contrast to Enid, who she apparently knows. We get some scenes with Enid trying to what everyone talking about AOD. Kyo and Rad want to find out the problem. But Cleo tells her to think it through to herself to try and better understand her problems. We see a flashback through Enid's mind of them as kids where Enid and Aedie were best friends for years. Until they entered the tournament to get in point prep and they made the final two. In the fight Enid was about to win will refuse to fight her best friend and Yost. Enid congratulates Aedie but she says they were only friends for her to learn her moves and counter them. In the present Enid tells Kyo that Aedie taught her not to care by avoiding disappointment. This is an interesting look of how a character seems not to be bothered by things. Kyo tells her the real fairy is not caring, so she challenges AD to a rematch where the Koyas go hard. The action scenes in the show are very really good. Enid wins this battle when AD leaves in her Yimo. She repeats that she still loves being popular. Kyo didn't hear the story when the flashback, but when he heard only a brief part, he asked one question Did AD know about the tournament when they were friends? Adding logic to the past the reason why it should be thought through and cared about, you have to care as the title said. This episode is really great, Enid says she doesn't think she hates her still. Which is a good sign of growth showing she moved on from being mad or dismissive of the past. The episode could have ended here but it didn't. As for AOD, she showed off the whole episode, she seemed to be just an uptight show off who betrayed her old friend. But there's more at any moment of rephrases the episode. It's revealed that AD came here to visit her childhood friend. It gives death to her and wondering her perspective. Why did she tell Enid that and why did she come here? Was she trying to make amends for just having trouble with it? This already gives questions for the mind of this character. Also, since it was Enid's memory, the flashback couldn't have been exactly how it happened. There could have been more to the story. This is something great for the show that shows every character has their own story. And AD was already the highlight from just this in season 1. This episode caused so much excitement when she might appear next, and that happened around season 2. For some background first, a previous episode showed Chip Damage, the hero, offer Enid a place in point prep, so she is going now. This creates a 5 episode arc set for the most of the show being Van Revenge in the Piazza. It's a good way to show more world building and stories of this corrupt hero system. However, I want to keep this video on just AD specifically, and she barely even does anything in 2 of the 5 episodes. First episode, Wisdom Friend for Christmas, more of an introduction of Point Prep, and has Captain Sparkle serve as Enid's friend from the Piazza. However, this still has an interesting use of AOD. Instead of just telling the audience how uptight this girl will be, 
AID being there seems to already show that both Enid and the audience. It gives knowledge and personality on the setting before even going there to those who have saw the previous episode. It's clear they have history, but that's brushed aside for Enid's test to fly five holograms. She defeats all three, which no one has done before, so he placed her in a random track. She is probably yeast charisma compared to wisdom and strength, but Enid does seem to have all three. If anything, it fit what is a parody to have characters placed in the wrong house just to be all main characters. It leads onto the episode Bitter's Brief Rival. Enid meets her roommate, who of course is the name you all know is starting with a. Uh, Nesto. Wait, it's not, it's her, I guess. They mention to the other people that they know each other, but can't go into their history right now. This episode consisted of competing chaos, and I like the way they showed the yes and ideas. I like how they both give hero introductions that go hard. Any of these being more colourful, or even this dark and dramatic one. It is tense between them when they see him like they were Asian rivals according to their teacher. The next test is them working on the problem. Most are trying to figure it out by maths or calculations, but Enid imagined it in a situation where attacking the bush. AD worked out in a more traditional learning way, while Enid just figured uses hiding bushes. This competition leads to a climb off where they have a discussion while doing it, and AD gets a power up. I wonder why. AD decides to put aside winning for the first time to help Enid and apologize for abandoning her. They stop falling but still fail the test and get ease. So, they are friends again now. I echo this was handled by episode 2, and the conflict will be more complex in the 8th part of this arc. The next episode, Are You Ready for Mega Football, only had AD cheering in the background. It is mainly just a fun sports episode, the only important thing is how Spark gets a power up, similar to what happened to AD last episode. Next, Mystery Seeper was Ian and AD happy to be friends again, and despite being yet all roommate already, they have a sleepover. Also, Kyo and Val sneak in and join the sleepover while noting something suspicious happening at point prep. The sepo was going fine, but Kao mentioned going point prep, and that caused Aidy to start gatekeeping. Saying stuff because for the best of the best, or is it? Here they had to yield to attend the after hours meeting, where hero chip damage spreads power ups to students, for you to be the best of the best. This is an impressive commentary on the system and hierarchy, where be for those better are given advantages, this hero system is heavier based on where you are from, ignoring your small heroes with higher power level. Next episode, Final Exams, has well the Final Exams day where Rad and Ko get captured immediately for their spying. Enid wants to save them and solve the mystery, but Aidy wants to do the final. And she asks Enid whether she is going to throw away all she worked for for this, but Enid still goes on and almost gets caught immediately, but Aidy decides to show up. But she is still a bit upset about it. This is a great moment to show the conflicting ideas, for A or D. You understand why she wanted to go find the exams, but she has changed and doesn't want to abandon Eden again. They find out Chip damaged a robot and has been actively corrupt recently. His creator, Dr. Grayman, tries to stop him and he was created to be a true hero, but his own brain seems to become too far. Him being a robot shows how fake the ideal hero is. A or D and Eden win the battle against them, and Grayman passes them despite them missing the exam. Things went well, but there's a status quo, so Enid used point prep. The reason she disagrees with the youth that some heroes are worth more. And she was making fair progress to out the top university. Enid offers AD to join her, but she made her path. Despite chip damage in the end being fake, she agrees with his creation and what the world needs. This shows the interesting contrast of Enid putting her own beliefs first, while AD focuses on a greater meaning and stays. Despite their disagreements, they end on good terms. And this arc did a great job expanding AOD. She gets more development to her character, beliefs, and dynamics with Enid. She's also funny, and a representation of the positive of the hero ideals. Also, this show shows the flaws and corruptions, on which AOD has some of, but also yearns and chooses to help Enid in the end, as a great moment for the best character of the show. She also has more appearances, so onto them now. This video is longer than I thought it would be. Dark Piazza is the finale of season 2 and an easy top 5 episode of the whole show. Edie's role is a lot more limited, but she's still got a strong episode at the moment. This episode involves Foxtail, the one who made Chip Damage form the underground gifted program. Now she's invading the Piazza for orbs. Carol was working the stop point from doing this, but they need the orbs to be stronger than the villains. Edie is just there to watch this happen as on the machines to destroy the Piazza. Two months later, the rebellion plans to take back control and ends up with a mecha piazza battle against Foxtail's spaceship. 
Foxtail asks Elodie to turn on Disempower Ray against them, even despite there being heroes there. She used to be against using the villains in the flashback episode, but now she lost that and thinks some sacrifice needs to be made for a greater good. She shoots the Ray and it reflects onto them, and Elodie disables the shield and protects the glass. Then she says the greatest line in the whole show. Nothing wrong with a couple of sacrifices if it's for the greater good. She absolutely ended her whole career, the And her whole belief of hero society by just pressing a button, she knew it was wrong, but waited for a good moment to stand against it. Ayodhi represents the positive side of believing in the greater good, knowing this was a time to rebel and cause the Fox Hills defeat. I used to think Fox Hills redemption fell forth, but it's interesting. Their beliefs of power and hierarchy fall apart once she believes she's now powerless, and it was caused by her own ray. Considering how she pushed Greyman out for using his powers, this is a great punishment for showing her become who she hated. She also has to come to terms how she tried to keep the world safe on her own and accept help from others. After a big emotional speech, Ayade admits she dialed back the ray, making it only temporary. But the important part, Fox still didn't know that. She steps down and gives the role to Ayade. While I question giving someone in charge of a big industry to someone who's probably younger than 20, it is really well deserved. It felt set up by a point for mini series that she had it in her. She is yet to be here off a direct action and more of a year there. She gets rid of the uniform and conformity of point and looks to approve it. She didn't see that much of point after, probably due to season 3's yemt, but it has seemed to be better. Dark Piazza was a great confusion in Aidy's arc and the whole season. Aidy had a really strong arc, but she still got one more episode in season 3. Chip's damage involved the touchy issue of Chip being missing, and few know why. Instead of having AD's character menu being in Eden episodes, this episode focuses on her and Kyo. AD entered the plaza in a very AD way, with Tech saying she loves being in charge. She asked Kyo's help with Point being in new management, and needs help with the problem of Chip damage being attempted to rebuild. AD wants help programming and at Yike. ND could have been called and fixed him in a second. The only problem is you'll have to specify things to be good. Or else you'll say you didn't ask when he goes on a rampage. Typical Dendy. Anyway, AOD wants to restore Chip as he is a symbol of heroism. While Kyo doesn't quite believe in him anymore, but until he starts finding his top 10 chip damage moments will be uploaded. Imagine doing top 10 videos couldn't be me in the past year. AOD admits she was on chip damage forums as the founder and her name was Damage Princess 555. This is just a fun backstory to a character that you wouldn't have expected. They both want to restore their childhood idol of what Chip was, this new version doesn't work well. Rock the Greyman comes in and turns him off with his kill switch. They wanted the inspiration in robot form, but looking at Kyo and LED, it did work. However, that is no longer needed, so Chip retires and says LED is the hero he really need. They agree to put faith in real heroes instead, and it's a nice ending. Oh, and in Thank You for watching the show, we see LED judging upon prep, but it's not much for them we already know. Because I carried all the hard kind of an ending. I'm very really fine with what we got with AOD. She got a full character arc and served to push Enid, but has a yacht more than that. Even just the first steps with her yacht to go off with her. And further appearances expanded her character. So, yes, I find the third say AOD is the best character. Both from how she's well written and it feels unique compared to others. The more accurate answer is I just like her the most and this great character in every way. In conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wish I reached an anniversary, but this month off gave me good ideas of how I should manage this channel, with what videos I should make over others. I also really like OK Curious Heroes, and I plans for some more videos. At this point, it's mainly two character videos yet that I want to make. If you enjoyed this video, consider first subscribe and watching more of my videos. Both are ones already out and to come. The End